welcome to Heating Geeks. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different to my usual stuff, okay? As you're going to see here, uh, a lot of this is going to be still frames, uh, simply because I was having issues with my camera. So as I've just got some stills and a little bit of video footage when it started to work properly. Anyway, you'll see. So this issue here is it's a S-Plan system and the customer's reporting they have no heating. Hot water works fine, heating doesn't. So what I'm going to show you here, the first thing I do, I jumped in there and I checked to see if the central heating two port was getting power to open down the brown. So I'd done that test and it was, there was 240 there. So I then felt the valve and the valve appeared to be open. Uh, so the next test I would do is check is there power on the orange to fire the boiler, which I show that test here now. Uh, and there wasn't. So here's a shot of the multimeter. No power, 18 volts. So knowing an S-Plan system and how it works, I then check the grey because the grey wire on an S-Plan is what gives the orange wire the 240. So if you were to pull the grey wire out of the wiring centre on an S-Plan system, uh, whichever valve you've pulled that grey wire out of, uh, once it opened, it would still send no power down the orange. So I've done them few checks. So I had power on the brown telling the valve to open. The valve appeared to be open. There was no 240 volt going down the orange to run the boiler, but the grey wire had 240 volts. So at that point there, we know either the valve isn't opening all the way uh, because it's jammed, or the micro switch within the valve has failed. So we have two things there. It could be the actuator, the, well, three things. Actuator, because of the micro switch, the synchron motor within the actuator, or the valve itself is seized. Uh, so this is what I found. Okay, so uh, it was the valve on this that seized. So what I did here, if you can see there, my hose is on the drain off below the valve into a bucket. I just uh, drained off all the excess pressure uh, from the heating system. And this is a very time sensitive job. So this is how I went about this. I'm undoing the torque screws that hold the cover on this four there, two are already out, but you don't need to watch me undo four screws. I have the new valve already uh, split and ready to go. Um, these valves are spring loaded unlike Honeywell, so you have to take them apart and, uh, and be aware of how they go together. So do it on the new valve first if you're gonna go down this route. Um, there we go, just wiggle it off. I'll freeze frame on me on the way I'm holding the new valve. So real simple, the system's now trying to empty use my hand and a cloth I get in there give it a good clean inside make sure there's no debris where there wasn't this system was actually quite clean I didn't do a very good job of putting the cloth in but it's enough to hold back the majority of the water and uh, I get the new bit ready in my hand get it all back together and all I've got to do now is get the screws in so that's a really simple way of uh, not disturbing any pipe work on a Danfoss valve now the reason I would use this technique and by the way if you look there's grease on the end of my screw there that's to, so that's on my screwdriver that was to hold that screw on the screwdriver without it falling off uh, so I didn't have to worry about me trying to pick the screwdriver up while holding that back and the screw falling off the tip. So basically, the reason I use this technique is, let's say this two port is in a cupboard really tight against a cylinder and it's an old cylinder with flanges on it. You might not want to be trying to undo the nuts and spread the pipes apart because you don't want to risk making that cylinder leak. So this is just a real nice way of doing that. Now, I've got two screws in that I'll make sure the uh, I make sure the valve uh, turns nice and freely before I go about putting the rest of the screws in. The key thing to notice here is the way I hold that valve when I was putting it in, the way I held all the guts together. This is a slipper valve, uh, which so it's not a ball and plate or it's not a, a paddle. This is called a slipper valve, they're slightly different. Um, so yeah. 
So my next video, just so you guys know, is the wiring one. It's S-Plan wiring. Uh, it's all filmed for the second time. I've had to film that twice because I wasn't happy with the first lot. That's going to be my very next video. Uh, I'm going to pull all that into the editing suite. Now, once I've got this video live, or once I've got this video edited, it, that's coming in. Uh, that's going to take a little while to edit because there's hours and hours of footage, but I'll get that done ASAP. And I'm going to create some sort of uh, PDFs or something that people can use to help them uh, help them learn on that one. So that's coming next.